What's up tennis fans? I'm Lauren Lynch and this is Tennis Now, your source for the latest tennis news now. American Wayne Odesnik took time to give his side of the story to Douglas Robson of USA Today on the doping controversy that has plagued his career since the 2010 Australian Open. Long story short, Odesnik was caught with human growth hormone in Australia last year. He was found guilty of possession but not consumption. He was banned for two years but that was cut in half when he agreed to work with the ITF's anti-doping program. That all raised several eyebrows. According to Brisbane court documents and the magistrate's ruling in the case, Odesnik admitted to bringing eight vials of HGH and other medical equipment in his luggage. He initially informed custom officers he was in possession of a doctor's prescription for HGH to aid a career-threatening injury. In court, he changed this evidence and admitted he had ordered the HGH from the internet. He revealed that he consulted two unnamed doctors who recommended the HGH as being beneficial to recovery from injuries. He also claimed that it was his intention to gain official clearance for the use of HGH before using it as a treatment. Many rumors surfaced around the investigation as far as the details were concerned and the information Odesnik traded for halving his sentence. This still all remains quite a mystery. One of the things we have to be very careful about is saying anything that would violate the confidentiality we have with the ITF, Christopher Lyons, Odesnik's lawyer said. How he got it, where he got it, where he paid for it, whether it was a doctor's prescription or over the internet, all that stuff, we are not going to be able to discuss that. Odesnik continues to maintain his innocence and says the ordeal was a costly mistake and misunderstanding. He said that he was only going to use the HGH after he had permission to do so to treat shoulder and back injuries, and that he wasn't aware that the possession of the drug was against any violations. Odesnik said, if I knew it, I wouldn't have done it. It was an honest mistake, and I paid the price for it. I did not know that the sole possession of any banned substance at the time was a violation. I know if you take something and test positive, it's a violation, but seeing as I've never taken it, I never thought that with a doctor's consultation or whatever, that it would be a doping violation. USA Today's journalist Robson pointed out, however, that Odesnik had taken no time off for any injuries previous to the incident, which is a little fishy. There was no proof that he was going to consult officials before the tournament. Doping expert Gary Walder claims HGH is a performance enhancing but not used to treat injuries like Odesnik claimed. And the supposed doctors still remain unnamed. Somehow the story seems to not add up. Not to mention that he has been training with his coach Guillermo Cañas who was ironically banned for 15 months due to a doping scandal himself. Peculiar, but remember, innocent until proven guilty. The semifinal results are in for the Monte Carlo Rolex Masters in Monaco. It's been since Australia that we have seen him in a semi, but third seeded Andy Murray defeated Federico Gill and will face world number one Rafael Nadal, who is going for his seventh title at the tournament and took out Ivan Lubacic. Rafael Nadal leads their head to head series win 9 to 4. Due to a shocking upset, David Ferrer will face Jurgen Melzer, not Roger Federer. World number nine Melzer earned his first win in four attempts over number three Roger Federer on Friday, as he defeated the three-time runner-up 6-4-6-4 for a place in the semifinals. Last year's Roland Garros semifinalist is through to his first ATP World Tour Masters 1000 semifinal. He may become the first Austrian to reach the final at Monte Carlo Country Club since Thomas Muster won the title in 1996. Melzer said, I mean, I've beaten Rafa last year, I have beaten Nole, and this was the one missing. I'm very happy I actually did it today. Federer said, it's always disappointing regardless against who you lose. Ferrer leads their head-to-head -head series 3-1, but Melzer beat him in their last meetings in Paris and at the French Open last year. If you are a huge Rafa fan, check out the fun photos he has been sharing via his Facebook. It makes you feel like you're one step closer to the beautiful Monaco. The ITF has announced the draws for the 2011 Fed Cup by BNP Paribas World Group semifinals and the World Group and World Group 2 playoffs on April 16th through 17th this weekend. 
The World Group 2 playoff tie between Japan and Argentina has been postponed until July 16th through 17th and will be played at the Bourbon Beans Dome in Kobe, Japan. This weekend, a number of the top names will be missing at the Fed Cup semifinals due to injury or the players simply wanting some rest. Defending team Italy will be missing Francesca Schivone and Italian number two Flavia Panetta, who's out for injury for the World Group tie in Russia. Russia will not have Maria Sharapova, but will have world number three Bira Zvonareva. Sharapova and Gisela Dulko have chosen to go for exhibition dollars instead of representing their country. Australia's team will be missing its Samantha Stosser, who along with Yelena Dokic has moved on to Europe to practice for Roland Garros without a detour to Melbourne, even though the tie in Ukraine will also be played on specially laid red clay. Kim Kleisters was out for Belgium originally due to shoulder wrist injury, but now faces a horrible ankle injury that may take her out of the entire clay court season. Top USA singles player Bethany Maddox Sands has been ruled out of this weekend's Fed Cup playoff tie against Germany with a hip and back injury. Vania King will replace Maddox Sands on the team, which also includes Melanie Udan, Christina McHale, and Liesl Huber. Well, that wraps it up for today, tennis fans. Be sure to subscribe to the Tennis Now YouTube channel. Click that button right up there. And if you're at the Easter Bowl this weekend, be sure to submit a photo on our Facebook and you could win $250 with an amount of the most amount of likes. Be sure to do it if you're there. You know, I'm sure you're taking a lot of pictures of all those juniors playing well. Be sure to get involved. Well, I'm Lauren Lynch and this is Tennis Now. Thanks for watching. See you Monday.